Hello, I'm Logic Projects, and this is my second dev vlog about learning Unity in 2021. For this week, I joined the Coding Blocks 2021 Game Jam. Before I discuss what happened during the Game Jam, let me show you the final game. The theme of the jam was Everything is Broken. The game I've created is called Ship Repair. First, you start out in an engine room, which is like a boat or a spaceship's engine room, and you get a notification from the captain that the engine has just went down and that you have to bring it back online. You can then click on the computer to open a manual. Once you're inside the manual, you have five different options you could choose and you want the fourth one, which is how to repair the engine. Then a giant list of steps appears and you are supposed to memorize as many as you can and then go about trying to fix the engine. If you mess up any of the steps, you can always go back and reread the manual to figure out what went wrong. You then take apart the engine and put it back together with a new turbine. Once the engine's back online, the captain will let you know that you did well. Next, the computer you were using to get your repair manuals breaks. Here you can open up the manual in the filing cabinet and press 1 to see the manual on how to fix your computer. You can then open the panel on your computer, add in some wires, wait for the computer to reboot, and then close the computer back up and you'll have beaten the game. Originally I had planned for there to be many more things that could break, but due to time constraints, these are the only two that exist. Overall, I got 22nd place out of 46 games, with rank 11 in Quirk being my highest, and 30th in Fun. I knew from the beginning this game might not be very fun, but one of the categories was quirkiness, and these were some mechanics that I had been wanting to try to code up. I submitted it about an hour before the deadline, but I really didn't have much wiggle room there because my internet is very slow and I had no idea how long it would take me to upload the game. Overall, I'm really happy with how the game came out, and I think it looks really good for what it is. It took me about 10 hours of dedicated focus over 4 days to create this. Here's a time lapse of how I spent those 10 hours, sped up about 12,000%. First, I started out by spending an hour or so brainstorming my idea. I've been playing a lot of Space Station 13, which is an online multiplayer RPG. One thing I love about Space Station is being an engineer and having the ability to take everything apart or build anything I want, and I wanted to steal some of those systems from my own game. I listed out what I thought the core gameplay loop would be, and some things I thought the player should be able to fix. The theme was everything is broken, so I wanted to create an engine room where you have many things breaking and you had to fix them. The idea was that with many things breaking, and each thing having a complex set of steps to fix them, things would get out of control fast. In hindsight, this was way too out of scope for what I could do in 4 days. Overall, I put 10 hard hours of intense focus into the game, with about half of those being on the last day. I followed the Pomodoro method, so I got about 20 Pomodoros done, with 4 or 5 a day being my goal. At the end of brainstorming, I had a prioritized list of every feature I wanted, and I started to create placeholder art for my character. I built a steam engine system, and I laid out the basic map for the whole game. I decided to do a single screen game, which was a very good call. I got a little too ambitious here of how much I put in the main room, and most of that got cut in the last day. I wanted to learn how to use UI and to create a text dialog system, so I found a Brachys tutorial. But before finishing it, I knew where his code was going, and so I stopped to brainstorm all of the objects I wanted to fix and the steps to fix them. Almost none of these made it into the final game, so it's hard to say if this was wasted effort. Brainstorming was pretty low effort, and having examples of what I wanted to be able to do helped me structure the software, so I think it was productive. On the second day, I really started the bulk of coding, and I created the infrastructure for all of my systems. I am really proud of this design, and I think it's really easy to test the things as I built them, while having rich interconnections between all of the systems. I still have a ways to go before I can really understand what best practices are, though. And my Git hygiene started out bad and got much worse as the weekend went on. The first object I coded up was the engine. This is when I realized that it was a lot more work to create an object than I had hoped. I needed to create all the states for the objects, and the entire state machine to handle tool usage and move between the states. My dream would be to have an in-editor solution to create and wire up the state machine, but I don't know enough about Unity to create this yet. I made some placeholder tool art which made it into the final version, and I gave the player the ability to hold them. 
Then, based on what the player is holding, it would cause different interactions to be sent to the engine on click. This is how Space Station 13 does things, and it's a little confusing, but these are the systems I was trying to steal. I did run into a problem where I had to make empty hands act as a tool because some things could only be done with empty hands. This created a lot of spaghetti code. Finishing the engine code was exhausting and error prone. At this point I realized I really needed to tone down how many objects I had hoped to have in the game. I went into day 3 by doing placeholder art for the engine and writing code to change which sprite was visible based on the state of the engine. At this point my girlfriend hadn't started helping me with the art, so this entire bit of art got scrapped. It was useful though to get the code tested and to encourage her to see that I need artistic guidance. Now we're into day 4, the final day, and I have a full engine that can be broken and repaired. My girlfriend gave me a full 10 hour day on a Sunday, and helped to create tons of art while I started the UI system. Thankfully I already had much of the code in place for the tech system, so it worked pretty easily without much hassle. I used Kenny's Space UI, and I only had to do minor tweaks to get it to the size I wanted. I wrote the manual, and as art pieces were finished, I added them to the game. By the time the engine art was done, the deadline was only two hours away, so I got my brother into a Discord call. He playtested and gave me some feedback, and I convinced him to help me get some sound effects added. He rewrote how tools worked and helped to make different sound effects based on what action was performed, which helped get a little bit of feedback as to which step was done. I did have a major problem here, as I made the engine need 8 unique sprites and my girlfriend had to painstakingly create them while I just hacked them together in a sprite. I really underestimated how long it takes to create a good piece of artwork and get it into a game. There was also some poor communication, so one of the sprites was missing in the final game, and I just left the code as is. In hindsight, I should have removed that step since someone caught it in the comments of the game and got confused by it. I added it where the computer could break, and you'd have to check a backup paper manual in the filing cabinet to fix it. Thankfully the art was much simpler here, so I got to show off the idea of having something take time to fix. My girlfriend gave me a main character sprite, and we all did one more playtest, and my brother helped me build it for the browser and upload it with around an hour to spare. Overall, I'm really happy with how the game turned out. I learned a lot about how to scope a game and what I could get done in four days. I had a good mixture of using systems that I was familiar with from my Amazon game, while also getting to try out some new things in Unity. Overall, I'm very happy with my placement, as it was my first ever game, and now I have a game published under my belt. Publishing a game on itch.io was a very intimidating task, and thanks to the Game Jam's strict deadline, I had to just get over that fear and publish something as is. Going forward, I now know the importance of art and sound design, when making a game. No one cares about how complex or interesting the code is if the game doesn't look nice or feel nice to play. Thank you for watching and I hope you subscribe to see how my journey continues over the course of this year.